Okay, let's uh, do a quick synopsis and a rundown of who actually does the hell need a light meter. If you are taking, if you're doing weddings. If you are, there's a lot of people, well, I've shot weddings, I never need a light meter. Yeah, and uh, I don't need a safety uh, seat belt to drive a car. And uh, I don't need a fire extinguisher, and I don't need house insurance either. Um, a lot better with it. Results are a lot better when you actually have it. So, yeah, I don't need a light meter, I still need a histogram. What about white balance? How are you going to do that? Now, this is not a light meter, obviously. This is a little color checker passport, which I talked about in another video. Make, you said, nobody, when it comes to the light meter, it comes to this thing, the same thing applies. Nobody is paying you money to piss away two hours in Lightroom at night versus 20 minutes in Lightroom. And both of these tools will shave off a lot of time. If you're going to sit there and bracket and spray and pray and then go through all those pictures and then white balance them, then you're an idiot. It's like, well, a light meter costs money and I don't know how to use a light meter. Uh, you take the money, the revenues that you make uh, from your wedding, from your photo shoots, you buy yourself a light meter, you take yourself a weekend, take you longer than a weekend <laughs> to learn how to good, use a good light meter. You calibrate it to your camera and then it will make things easier for you. This is a complex scientific device. Well, actually compared to scientific devices in general, it's not that complex. Your camera does not have an incident meter. Okay? You can't sit there and uh, take an incident reading with your camera. You cannot, uh, you can't measure the incident light. What are you going to do? I mean, I could sit there like in a chapel, for instance. I mean, it doesn't, this is applicable to landscape. This is applicable to any form of photography. Obviously, if you're going to take action shots, you can't sit there and take a light meter reading of like uh, Angelina Jolie getting out of the car. You know, you take a picture. And then you adjust it in Lightroom. I'm not talking about that kind of photography where you don't have time. You know, you take an intelligent guess or you spot meet or whatever you think your midtones are, you take a picture. Or you even stick it in program mode if it's sports in action. You know, whatever gets the shot, right? This is applicable to basically all photography. Uh, so who needs a light meter? I've already said that 95% of people don't need light meter. You know, this is the same 95% of people that don't uh, absolutely need a seatbelt. Because uh, 95% of those people are not going to get in a car wreck. Uh, eventually, they probably will, and 5% of them will, and they would have been better off if they were a seatbelt. Um, truly exposing the shot for the absolute dynamic range of what your camera is capable of. I've, as I've already said, 75% of the details of most shots is in the top three spots underneath clipping of the dynamic range of your camera. That means if you use spot meter or matrix meter with your camera, then you're missing out on some highlight details that you're not going to find. You know, once it's if it wasn't captured to begin with, raw or JPEG, or God I hope you're shooting in raw. You know, you're, there's nothing to mess with in Lightroom. There's nothing to mess with. Mess with in Photoshop. It wasn't there. It wasn't captured. Your light meter lets you do that. Your camera does not. Um, speed lights. Studio strobes. I've already told you I know of nobody. I've never seen a person. You know, unless someone like actually has a studio and they never like shift their lights around. It's like they take shots and the lights have got dust on the feet because they never move them. They, and they, their camera is programmed. You know, those sort of idiots, they don't need a light meter. Anybody else that is taking you know, on location, the speed light and studio strobe shots, headshots, they all use a light meter. That's because your camera is useless as tits on a bowl when it comes to metering for flat. It's useless. With this, I can take incident readings of multiple speed lights or studio strobes, or I can take reflectance readings through this scope right here, one degree spot meter readings of like the side of someone's face. I'm going to check the hair lighting, click. Then I'm going to hit the memory button. I'm going to take my main lighting uh, so off the side of the face. Click. Hit the memory button. Okay, I want my uh, my background lighting to be two stops under. Okay, so I'm going to take another reading of my background right. Click. Check it. Uh, it's, too, it's too hot. I'm going to drop the power on it. You're done. You're done. You always know, well, okay, I want my fill light to be two stops, three stops underneath uh, my main light. 
I want my hair light to be uh, two and a half stops underneath my main light. I want my background light, depending on the distance away from the subject, you know, uh, like four stops. And uh, you, you said the, the the light meter will tell you the clipping points too. It's like you're. It will tell you. It will blink to you. It will tell you with you're within you know uh, half as you can set the range for half stop, quarter stop, what whatever you want in EV. Uh, to, to warn you that you're within uh, the clipping range of either uh, one side or the other side of the dynamic range and your specular or your shadows of the clipping range of your camera. And you can be so confident with this thing that you don't, you stick your camera in manual and just screw the light, you screw what the camera tells you because this is so much more accurate, especially when you know what the hell you're doing with it, obviously. I mean, you can have a light meter and you don't, but that's something else. That's learning how to use a light meter. It's a scientific tool. And people that think that this takes more time, well, I'll tell you what takes more time. You can spray and pray and bracket a bunch of shots, and you could piss that time away in Lightroom at night, or you can get it right the first time. That old saying, uh, measure twice, cut once. So these are the people that need a light meter. Everybody can benefit from a light meter, but I've already said that 95% of people don't need a light meter. What I've stated as far as the advantages of a light meter over that of the meter in your camera are undeniable. They're irrefutable. Your camera is a useless piece of crap when it comes to meter. You're, you're useless. Can't do any incident readings. Useless. And how important is that when you're taking uh, snow, snow scenes? I'm going to take a trip to Iceland, you know? Well, that's great. You know what your camera is truly useless at when you've got a bunch of snow? Or you've got a bunch of shadows, and you've got some high contrast scenes. You don't know why you're actually pushing the upper limits and you're clipping your highlights. Your camera can't tell you that. Sure I can. I can look at the histogram. That's after the fact, and that's only of a JPEG. Your histogram doesn't tell you everything. Well, sure it does. I look at my histogram, I know exactly what it's telling me. It does not tell you whether you've reached the upper limits of the dynamic range of your camera doesn't tell you that. You're supposed to be pushing everything up as far as you can, depending on the, depends on the compositional choice, where you actually aim this infinite meter reading, for example, if I've got one light. You know, that's an artistic choice. I mean, I should be putting it right here underneath my chin. Let's say I've got only one light, and it's coming in over here, and it's striking the side of someone's face. I only want to expose for that and leave everything over here in the black. That's an artistic choice, if that's what you want. Or I can actually take a reading here and here, and then I could hit the average button and it tells me what it is and the exposure will come up perfectly. And you can't chip on the back of that little LCD screen. You think you can and hit the 100% button to look at it. Like, yeah, it looks good. No. It's good, but it's not good enough. And if you're getting paid, you know, uh, the people that are getting paid, and especially people who are using studio strobes and speed lights, they greatly benefit from having one of these and they have one for a damn reason. Well, I got by for so long without a speed light, I mean a, uh, a light meter, I don't think I need one. Well, good, you keep on going and thinking that. But I can guarantee you one thing, if anybody was using speed lights and, uh, uh, or, uh, you know, doing a bunch of landscape photography or headshots or portraiture, and they knew how this thing worked, which didn't take that long to learn how to use the light meter, even this is a really advanced one, this is a Konica 758, you once you had it, it's like how on earth did I did I live without it? My shots are better. I'm not sitting there dicking around, bracketing everything. You know, bram. You know, I'll take the best shot. I'm gonna take the best shot out of these. I'm gonna bracket the hell out. And then you're pissing your time away late at night, going, Oh my God, I gotta look through all these shots. These are the same people that say the light meter is a waste of time. I don't want to waste time. I want to just get the shot. Yeah, I know you want to get the shot, but how about you get the shot right the first time? Not only right the first time, but the best the right the first time. This is what a light meter is for. Like I said, I've not seen anybody that uh, is, uh, has any skills with uh, speed lights and studio strobes and uses more than one light. Even one light is incredibly useful because your, your camera can't do damn thing with studio strobes and speed lights off camera. It, it's no good. It's useless. This makes things easy. Makes things fast. And let me say it again. Whatever you're doing, wedding photography, portraiture, you are not being paid more money by spending 10 times as much time at night in Photoshop or Lightroom. You know, whether you spend 20 minutes in Lightroom or 2 hours in Lightroom, you are not being paid more. That's where this thing would pay for itself. Like, 
that. Okay? I hope I made that very clear and simple. I don't know how much simpler I could make it. And uh, if you have a problem with anything I said in this video, that's your fault because everything I said in this video is accurate. Okay? Bye. You don't want to use a light meter? Fine. Don't use a light meter. But nothing I said was untrue. Got it? Good.